Hi, welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on short case revision for surgery posting for venous examination station. So first, the patient's position will be in standing position. And remember the aim of this venous system examination is to know which venous system is involved, which perforators incompetency causing the abnormalities such as varicose vein, and also to check the patency of deep, deep veins. So first, inspection from front and back, compare the both of the legs, look for visible varicose veins, look the site and the size extent of the varicose veins, whether it is involving the long saphenous vein or short saphenous vein, and also inspect the saphenous varics at the groin area. Inspect along the veins for any presence of blowout, look at the saphenous varics and also Ask the patient to cough to check for a cough in pulse. Look at the surrounding skin for any scars, signs of chronic venous insufficiency, such as lipodermatosclerosis, pigmentation, corona phlebectatica, induration, eczema, or ulceration. So I will further expand on this in the discussion later on. So next we proceed to palpation. Palpate over the cause of the long and short saphenous veins. Also check the temperature and any tenderness in the lower limbs along the veins. So besides palpating the course of the long and short saphenous system, we also feel around the saphenofemoral junction, which is located 2 to 0.5 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So we palpate that area and then we ask the patient to cough. So if there is palpable cough in pulse, it suggests for incompetence of the saphenofemoral junction. Next, we can do the tap test, where we place our fingers of one hand. For example, we place our fingers of the right hand at the lower part of the varicose vein, and then we tap above the varicose vein using our left hand. So if there is impulse felt on the right hand, it indicates incompetence of the superficial veins. Trendelenburg test is done by, um, we ask the patient to lie down first, and then we empty the veins. After emptying the veins by shocking along the veins and elevating the leg, we then place two fingers over the saphenofemoral junction, which is located just now, I said, at the 2.5 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So we place two fingers over the saphenofemoral junction, press hard, and then we ask the patient to stand up while keeping our fingers firmly in place. We then watch the leg of the patient. So if there is no feeling of the superficial veins below, but after releasing our two fingers, then the veins refill, this will indicate saphenofemoral junction incompetence. And next, for tourniquet test, we ask the patient to lie down. So this tourniquet test is similar to the Trendelenburg test. We ask the patient to lie down, elevate the affected leg until the dilated veins are emptied and we can help by stroking the veins to empty the veins. Then we place a rubber tourniquet tightly around the upper thigh. This is to occlude the superficial veins. We then ask the patient to stand up and watch below the tourniquet. So this is to differentiate whether the incompetent valve is at the saphenofemoral junction or it is below the tourniquet level, which is in the perforators at the lower part of the leg. So. After emptying the veins, we ask the patient to stand up and watch below the tourniquet. If the veins above the tourniquet rapidly refill and the below veins remain collapsed, then this will suggest incompetency of the valve at the saphenofemoral junction because the tourniquet is helping it to um, function. So veins, if the veins below the tourniquet rapidly refill, then it will suggest incompetency at a perforator below the tourniquet area. So, so then we can repeat the test by progressively moving the tourniquet downwards to localize the site of the incompetency. So until the veins below the tourniquet stay collapsed, then that will be the site of incompetency. Pertis test is done by placing a tourniquet around the upper thigh after emptying the veins below. So after placing the tourniquet, we ask the patient to stand up and walk around for 5 minutes or another alternative is to stand up and tiptoe around 10 times. 
we watch the leg for any feeling of the superficial veins or whether the patient is complaining of bursting pain in the leg. This will indicate deep venous incompetency or occlusion of the veins. To complete the examination, we can say that we would like to do a thorough arterial examination, palpate inguinal limb node, which will be enlarged in varicose ulcer or deep vein thrombosis. Examine the abdomen for any mass that, be, that could be causing the abnormalities in the varicose system, and also auscultate over the varicosities for any presence of breed. This is the technique to present our complete diagnosis. So we have to say whether it's right or left side, and whether it's involving long or short syphilis system, the extent of the varicose vein is from where to where, and also due to incompetency in which valves, either the cephalofemoral junction or other perforated valves. For discussion, I'll be expanding on the signs of venous insufficiency that could be seen in venous system examination. So first will be one of the signs of venous insufficiency is saphena varix, which is a bluish discoloration of the termination of the long saphenous vein. And this saphena varix usually disappears when lying down. So this picture shows the long saphenous vein and the termination, which is the saphena varix. You can see this bulging over here at the upper thigh. Another sign is spider and reticular veins, which are dilatation of the intradermal veins. And you can see in this picture here, the reticular veins are larger than the spider veins. Lipodermatosclerosis is defined as localized chronic inflammation and fibrosis of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. It is usually painful, indurated, and hardened. So this picture shows a picture of lipodermatosclerosis at the lower leg. Corona flebectatica are dilated venules around the medial malleolus, so around the ankle area at the inner side, medial malleolus side and it gives rise to an ankle flare appearance. So this picture shows corona flabectatica. There are dilated venules around the medial malleolus. Atrophic branch are white color atrophic plaques due to absent capillaries in the fibrotic tissue, shown in this picture here. Stasis eczema, where venous stasis will cause extravasation of the hemosiderin into the subcutaneous tissue, causing this appearance. And lastly, a sign of venous insufficiency would be venous ulcer, which is typically found at gator's area around the medial malleolus, shown in this picture here. This is the gator area. And venous ulcers are usually described as shallow, sloppy edge, irregular border, with base maybe filled with granulation tissue, and the surrounding skin is almost always accompanied by lipodermatosclerosis. So that's it. that is all for this video. Thank you.